Welcome to this installment of Hip Mojo, show 12. I'm your host, Ashkan Karbas Rushan. And I'm C.T. Moore. And today we're going to talk about a bunch of stuff. We're going to talk about who not could replace Steve Jobs, of course, but who the media, the business press, is going to look at as the next man or woman to lead the tech world in the 21st century. And in the second segment, we're going to talk about a potential shift in the video world, which is going from the focus of creating evergreen videos, so timeless videos, to focusing on real-time news. Let's take it away with segment one. All right, so um, you wrote an article again, Ash. Shocking. On, on TechCrunch. Uh, you, you, you talk about some of the people. I wanna, I wanna go through this list, but what I think is interesting is, is the whole thing about why Steve Jobs was, was this talisman, why he was such a media darling, is he kind of affected all our lives, you know? Well, let's, first off, let's start off just because some people might not know. What is a talisman to you? Uh, well, according to your article, it is uh, the member of a football or soccer team who can make or break the game. If he's there, you're going to win, you're going all the way, and if he's not, you're toast. I'm a big soccer fan, you always hear it, so-and-so, the talisman, he's injured, is he going to be in, is he not, the talisman clinches the goal and all that. Yeah, it's basically the game breaker, it's the guy who, you know, is the leader, the, the Zidans of the world and whatnot. So yeah, basically, when I first suggested the article to Eric Schoenfeld of TechCrunch, he was like, this is a pretty interesting list, but he goes, yeah, it's not who's the next Steve Jobs. He goes, I get it, that's not what you're saying, it's disrespectful, it's impossible. Uh, Al Gore said, Steve Jobs comes along every 250 years. I, I think that's actually quite accurate when you just look at what he did in the last decade of his life, let alone the, the vast you know, existence he had. But this notion that the tech media world, the business press, is always going to look at someone. Well, we all need media darlings, right? There you so, go. So, you know, I guess they're, they're talismans for their companies and they're media darlings just because there's, there's no rival, but they don't have that same cult personality. Because let's face it, when Steve Jobs died, uh, there was this really bizarre public outpouring of grief by just every, um, like, many mass consumers. Which... And why do you think that was? I have my, my theory, but let's hear yours um, first. People really love their iPhones. Like, I think mobile devices are really personal. You take them with you everywhere. Like, you would never let your girlfriend into your iPhone. You'll let her into your laptop. Uh, okay, we could go on a tangent there. What's interesting is that you focus on the iPhone. And you're right. As much as the iPod was the transformative device that then set the stage for the iPhone and the iPad, and as much as people are passionate about music, you're right that there is that certain element of a wireless you know, mobile device that people care about. But I'm actually going to play devil's advocate and say it's also because of how Steve Jobs allowed people to really, really engage with their media. Well, that's I, what I mean the, by I, the iPhone. Okay, you so know, you mean the, the whole... Okay. It's the experience. It was like, that was the portal for your average Joe. They don't know what iOS is. Anyways. I'll, I'll just say this. I think the main reason why Steve Jobs was so revered, believe it or not, is... Uh, he. I mean, I'm not saying he was. Some of his critics might say that he was a bit of an asshole with some some of his executives, for lack of better words. No, stories. But, but I actually think that, that that's besides the point. I think it's that he wasn't driven by money. And I think that there is a fundamental, and that's maybe because he had so much of it, and he said in, in the um, great Steve Jobs biography by Walter Isaacson, he said it, he goes, I went from being poor and not caring about money to being very rich and not caring about money. But I think that's the main difference. I've worked with people who care about money and don't care about money, or let's say are driven by, by money and not driven by money. And there's a fundamental difference in how much you like those people. Um, no, it, it's true. <laughs> it's and so I think, true. I think those who are driven by money as their first objective, and there's nothing wrong with that, it's harder to work with them, it's harder to work for them, it's harder to want to go to battle for them and all that. And I think Steve Jobs, he may have been very harsh, you hear he, nobody wanted to get in an elevator with him, but at the end of the day he had a greater calling. So yeah, basically wrote this, story, wrote this article, listed a bunch of guys. So, so let's go down the list, uh, I'll let you throw in your two cents as we go. Uh, you started off with the insiders, uh, guys from Apple, so we're talking about Scott Forstall, Tim Cook, and Jonathan Live. What do so you think? okay, so Business Week came out and said that Scott Forstall was like the, the emerging star, he runs their mobile strategy, the youngest executive, um, and that's sort of what got me thinking okay, the time's right, it's not, these, you know, it's not insensitive to write such an article. If Business Week can do it, then I'm going to go all out and list a bunch. Tim Cook is the nuts and bolts, you know, formerly COO, replaced Jobs. I think he's sort of like the, the literally like the details guy. Uh, and Jonathan Ive, the, the Johnny, is, is the creative guy. I think he's the one that apparently Jobs gave carte blanche to do whatever he wants. I would say that it's going to be very hard for that company, um, not so much of... Oh, you know, when Walt Disney died, there was a lot of great executives who didn't necessarily know, you know, 
what would Walt Disney do? And that's what sort of froze them in, in terms of inaction. I don't think that's the issue with Apple. They got a tr tr amazing pipeline and all that. I think the bigger issue is they just have so much cash and they're so dominant that I think complacency might become the bigger issue. In I'd also be worried that these th these three guys, Scott, Tim, and Jonathan, like if they get into a pissing contest and they, they have something to prove to show yeah. that like I can carry Steve yeah. Jobs' legacy, that could that could toast totally. Them. Next, let's up. move on. Uh, so enterprise software guys, you got uh, Larry Ellison, the founder of Oracle. And Mark uh, Benioff. Benioff. I think they're Salesforce. both. Yeah, they're both great. Ellison actually is an investor in Benioff's uh, company. Uh, I would say that the challenge here is that these guys are too much in the enterprise sort of yeah, soulless. Not sexy enough. They're not sexy enough. I mean, I think what made Jobs so unique is that people sort of use this product. So great geniuses, but not going to be the talisman. I think. Although Ellison gives fantastic quotes. Well. Maybe he can become a writer then. Yep. Uh, <laughs> this one I was baffled by, Bill Gates. Okay, we all know who Gates is, but like, let's face it, he had his window. He was a pretty big media darling for a while. Then he got eclipsed by the smaller guy. Like, there's, No matter what he do, does, I can't see him coming back as, as, as anything. True, I think he's too wealthy to really even care, but the bottom line is for a decade he left Microsoft, uh, replaced by Steve Ballmer, then he was chief architect. I actually think he could come back. and. You know, he could do some interesting things because he's not necessarily driven by money. Now, it doesn't mean that he needs to come back and be the CEO, by the way. But right now, his main focus has basically been malaria and great things like that, great causes like that. I'm just saying, if he started to chime in, he, you know, put it to you this way. His stock is so low because of everything you've heard. You know, the massive enamor enamorment that people have with Steve Jobs almost came at the expense of saying that, well, Bill Gates was this accidental hack that just stole ideas, even though Steve Jobs also stole a bunch of ideas. So I would say Bill Gates is on the list because his stock is relatively low. People actually don't expect that much from him on this front, in this talisman context, that he could surprise. Next. All right. Um, Michael Dell, chairman. Of Dell. Yeah, so Michael Dell came out in 97 and when, when Jobs came back was asked, what would you do if you were in Steve Jobs' shoes? And he said, I would shut down the company and give the money back to the shareholders. And obviously this came back to bite uh, Michael Dell in the butt. And the day when Apple surpassed uh, Dell in terms of market value, Steve Jobs sent out an email company-wide and said, look, I guess Michael Dell was wrong. And now Apple is worth 10 times as much as Dell. Ultimately, I, just, I think Dell is brilliant. Dell is really smart in terms of how he disrupted the PC industry initially with the way that he did the direct-to-consumer model. I just don't think Dell is all that passionate about anything other than Dell. Uh, computer or Dell company or Dell himself. Even user experience or exactly. anything like that. And that's what I think made Jobs so great is because his imagination was wild. He kept pushing he the envelope. A, he was a populist product man. Yeah, and part of that could be because once you realize your time is limited on planet Earth, you do take risks and you push the envelope. Uh, but it is what it is. Next. All right. Um, this guy's already been Time's Person of the Year. Mark Zuckerberg, founder of Facebook. What, what I find is interesting about him is I, I actually don't think he's what carries the company. He's definitely the face of it. Uh, Facebook has made too many dumb decisions, so either they were his ideas or he didn't have the common sense to push back. And uh, they're a little bit slow on some things because they launch new features only after some startup comes along and gives them the idea. I don't see the same push, the same drive. True, but the guy is 24. He's running a company with 800 million uh, users, even if some of them are not active. My point here is this guy has the platform and the runway to basically transform markets the way that Jobs did. Jobs did it through creative genius, market, marketing, salesmanship, technical you know-how, know, know -how, even though he wasn't a pro programmer or coder. Uh, but my point is, if Zuckerberg decides to get and launch the Facebook phone, it can move markets because he has that critical mass, right? Well, what they did steal one of Google Android's uh, developers over to their team. There has been rumors about a, a mobile operating system, but nothing beyond Listen, that. Listen, he's 24. He's allowed to make some mistakes. Jobs golden era, I think, respectfully, was not the first wave, it was probably the last decade. The last decade, what he did, he's disrupted four or five new industries, built individual, un he built units that if on a standalone basis would be Fortune 50 companies. All Next. Right. I want to keep going a little faster yeah. here. Sean Parker, you've got to be kidding me. Yeah, he's the Napster guy. Beyond that, he hasn't really disrupted or changed anything. He just managed to get his hands into things. Yes, you could argue that he's at the right place at the right time. He says, I've changed you know, history three times or whatever. The bottom line is, 
It's a lot about who can give sound bites. Steve Jobs was probably best at you know, salesmanship and, and you know, managing the stage and all that. Sean Parker, now that his net worth is, is soaring thanks to his uh, stake in Facebook, Sean Parker knows how to get on stage and say things that attract an audience. That's why he's on the list, right? Jobs was really good at five things, let's say tech, uh, design, marketing, sales, and business altogether. And, and Parker knows how to sort of manage. You know, he, there's not a microphone he doesn't like, and I think that's his. his and I think skill. the only reason he still gets access to microphones is because of the Facebook movie. I think that was, that was his second that trend. Was great. So yeah, maybe that was great. maybe he'll be right, but I doubt it. Uh, really, Evan Williams, founder. Evan of Williams. Twitter. I think Evan Williams' legacy as the the. T Twitter CEO is secondary to the fact that, you know, he did found Blogger, which was a main communication platform, then Twitter. There's something there. I also think that, you know, let history be the judge of what happens to him five, ten years from now. I think he will be thumbs up or thumbs down based on his next thing, not Twitter and Blogger, believe it or not. Well, no, that's, that's what I say. I just don't see the potential there. A blogger was great, but it sold off. It didn't change blogging in any way whatsoever. Well, no, but it, was, it did change publishing. It, it did a lot. It you did know? change publishing. In the, in the last decade, uh, if you think about basically the Iraq, sorry, 9-11, the Iraq war and Barack Obama, blogging and those three events just fed off, fed off one another and it just reached a, a greater thing. Now, you could argue WordPress ate bloggers launch, sure. You could argue that Twitter and, and Tumblr have changed blogger and blogging. That's fine, but that's neither here nor there. All right, uh, Sergey Brin and Larry Page. I think that's interesting, especially now that Larry Page is actually, you know, the, the CEO of Google, and more than one of the founding fo uh, founding partners. Um, why them? I, I I think their their heyday has passed. I think they'll still continue to be huge, but I don't think they'll same, be the media. Same reason as Zuckerberg. They are running the largest internet company. The web or mobile web is the future. They have the platform. Fair enough. Uh, Jeff Bezos, yeah, CEO well, Jeff, of Amazon. Yeah, well, he was like picked man of the year time 99. I think what he's doing with the Kindle, what he's doing with uh, you know Amazon Web Services, he is probably whom a lot of people would say number one or number two on this list uh, because of Amazon's unique role touching media and technology. Uh, what I think is interesting, going back to the Kindle, is it's opening up uh, publishing even just as much as blogging software did. Yep. Anyone can go publish an ebook yep, yep. now. And they've made it very easy. Uh, all right, the PayPal trio. Yeah, so the PayPal trio, of this trio, I put Elon Musk, Max Levchin, Peter Thiel. You should actually include Reid Hoffman, who was also there and done great things, especially with LinkedIn and his investments. Of this trio, Elon Musk is probably the most unique one, given what he's doing with space and cars and all that. The others, I mean, Peter Thiel's a fantastic investor. Hoffman, very successful at LinkedIn. Max Levchin, I think his stock took a hit with Slide, to be perfectly honest. But he did orchestrate the PayPal uh, the merger that led to PayPal that sold to eBay, so I think he still has a lot of upside. Okay, um, and then, you know, the founders of Kazaa and Skype. Uh, yeah, Jack so Skype, I mean, okay, so Kazaa was very disruptive. It basically built on Napster, um, but then I think Skype was really the transformative industry that decimated the telco world. I think in terms of juice, that was like that made the Titanic look like a smooth boat ride. Um, it's interesting what these guys are going to do. I think they've always been aware of an industry they could disrupt. Whether or not they care about the media, frankly, is probably what makes them outsiders on this list. But definitely, I mean, they've done interesting things in the last few years to merit being on the list. All right, um, a name I'm not actually familiar with, uh, Mark Anderson. Mark Anderson is the inventor of the browser, and he's a, he's a big time investor now. I would say Mark Anderson probably has more credibility than anybody else on this list to be perfectly honest with you. Now, he has moved from being an entrepreneur to an investor, so he's got his hands on many things. He bought Skype uh, along with Silver Lake private equity and then flipped it. He bought it for about two billion, sold it for eight billion within two years. So he seems to have that Midas touch. Uh, time will tell. And last on the list, Jack Dorsey. Jack Dorsey is the inventor of Twitter uh, and the square. So I would say if anyone on this list has that potential to really be number one, whom a lot of people on the TechCrunch comments said, number one, number one, Jack Dorsey. The thing that adds to his cachet is the fact that, like Jobs, he got fired from his company, and then he came back and is now running uh, Square as CEO, and he's head of pro uh, product at Twitter. So I think that adds to his sort of like destiny as the potential next talisman of the tech industry. We're going to take a short break, and we're going to come back and talk about evergreen videos versus uh, real-time news. Mm -hmm.